Welcome to Carol Creates, a podcast series produced by Corat Library at Carroll College. Join us as we listen to how Carroll faculty, students, and staff created something original and what their creative process was like. Let's tune into our third episode. We are here in Helena, Montana, speaking with Lorna Milne, author of Evelyn Cameron, photographer of, on the Western Prairie. Please introduce yourself to our listeners and tell them about your published work. Oh, hello. I'm Lorna Millen. I grew up in eastern Montana in Glendive. Um, after that, I attended the University of Montana, went, moved to Alaska to teach for four years. Had a, My main degree is in journalism, but I had a teaching certificate. And went on to get my graduate degree in nonfiction writing. I um, finally got back to Montana in 1988. So I've been here since then, taught at Carroll College for 30 years, um, and retired from teaching last year to write full time. So I'm happy to be here today. Thanks for um, letting me visit with you. Oh, we're delighted to have you. So your book, as I mentioned, is called Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, I wanted to write a biography for young adults since junior high, basically. I couldn't find enough to read on women. And I just put it in the back of my mind. Someday I'm going to write a, a biography. And when Evelyn came up as a subject, I settled into um, writing about her. So it the focus was would this be of interest to young women i hope it's of interest to young men as well but young women were my um they were my audience that i was aiming for and so i would choose subject material that i thought they'd be interested in i tried to use a voice that i thought would be appropriate and interesting to young women so that's how i went about um approaching a lot of material that's available on Evelyn because she kept a diary, a daily diary for 35 years. How did you first get interested in Evelyn Cameron? Well, there is a um, exhibit at the Montana Historical Society and there was an exhibit on this um, photographer's um, photographs, newly discovered and she was from Eastern Montana and I went to see the exhibit and I was just so taken with her work. She's a, she has a beautiful eye for composition and I knew the surnames of some of the people in the photographs because I'd gone to school with their grandchildren or um, grandnieces or, and there aren't a lot of photographs of Eastern Montana. The early photographers mostly took photographs of the mountains or the national parks or the Native Americans, all interesting subject matter, but not Eastern Montana, which I find really beautiful. Um, so by the time I got through with that exhibit, I thought Evelyn's going to be my first um, biographical subject and settled on her. So that feeds into my next question where I think you've addressed when was the point where you saw your interest turning into a book. Um, what was that process like? Were there any surprises? Well, yes. My first surprise was Mountain Press immediately accepted the query. Not, and I thought it would be harder because it's really hard to get published. There's a lot of writers these days and not as many publishing houses. So I knew to try for a local press and a small press, and they also will keep your work in print for a lot longer than a big press would. And they were very patient with me because it took me a long time to complete the work. And then I was, I'd never written biography, but I thought I had um, the skills because journalism also teaches you to be very exacting and detailed and do thorough research. And so I hope those skills would overlap 
in the biographical writing, I was surprised at how much of the writing is research. And really, there's not that much writing involved. Yeah. So what is your research process like, including for this work? Thorough. <laughs> the, <laughs> it would be in journalism, if you had something controversial, you checked three sources to make sure what you were going to publish was accurate. I don't know that that's so true these days, but it certainly is with good journalistic sources. In preparing to write Evelyn's book, the most useful thing I did was write a outline, a book outline, and publishers require that. Because it was such a long process, I'd go back to that outline when I was going to start a new chapter and look at it and say, oh, that's what I intended. And it was really helpful to have that outline to um, refer back to, to. And then because I had that outline, I only researched, you know, she had 35 years worth of diaries. None of them were um, transcribed at the point I began. I had to do my own, own transcriptions. I, so I would read around that period that I was writing on. Say I was writing about Ewan's um, death. And so I'd read the year before, the, read, uh, the year of, the year after to sort of get a sense. And I could skim some of that. So I didn't write, read all 35 years. It would have taken me much longer. And it, it, it really um, probably would have improved. I probably would have had a greater understanding of her, but just time didn't allow it. So limiting your research is really important. Make a decision. Okay, how am I going to approach this? This is what I think will work. And then I made an experiment with the first chapter which ended up being the second chapter. Um, read the entire year, transcribed it by hand. I didn't have a laptop yet, but I got pretty good at reading Evelyn's notes, the way she wrote, because she used a lot of um, abbreviations in her diary to cram a lot of material in. And then sent that chapter to the editor, got good feedback from two editors were looking at it, and then I went on. And so I think that process worked pretty well for biographical material. And this isn't something we talked about previously, but she was very economical with those diaries with each page. Could you briefly describe how those pages look? Oh yes, tiny, tiny handwriting. Her initial biographer, Donna Lucy, said reading the, the diaries ruined her eyes. So handwriting, very small, with a lot of abbreviations, like I said, and it took me a while. Now, BK was breakfast. Maybe that would have been more obvious to somebody else sooner, but I was getting things <laughs> down. Um, you know, she'd use a plus sign for cross when she was in London, um, when she was taking the train. And then if she had more to say, she'd get to the bottom. Oh, and all, pe all people were just E or you know, their, their first letter, most people, unless she hadn't introduced them before. And she'd get to the top, she'd go back to the top and pick up a red pen and write between the uh, lines with this red pen to fill things out. And she also began each day with the temperature and um, the conditions, you know, windy, um, dry, Oh, and sunset and sunrise. So that was really helpful. And it, it showed me also things about climate change because I grew up in Eastern Montana. It was still pretty cold when I was a kid, but it wasn't as severe as when Evelyn was there. So interesting historical con um, context. And an yeah. astonishing amount of information, really. Real, yes, yeah. Describe how you overcame one major challenge during the creation and publication process. Well, this is a long story, so you can edit away. <laughs> but the most interesting challenge was there was no wedding date for Evelyn and Ewan. As soon as they arrived in the United States, they referred to themselves as Mr. and Mrs. Cameron. But Ewan wasn't legally divorced until October. 
they showed up in late September or mid September on their first hunting trip when they came out in 1889. Donna Lucy in her wonderful biography um, said they were married quietly that fall in Scotland. Well, the British have good records and I couldn't find any records of them being married. I used a research librarian at Carroll College, search for that date. We couldn't find any dates. I went to Brian Chauvers, the head librarian at MHS. He wrote Donna Lucy and asked her where she got the date. She wrote back that all her material was packed because they were moving and then never responded later. And because of this journalistic training, I wasn't going to put down they were married in the fall in, unless I had a date. So I kept looking, did those other things I've described, and just let it sit because I was busy with other things. And then a couple of years before the book was published, Evelyn's grand niece and another writer published an article about Evelyn and Ewan in the Historical Society magazine, and there was no wedding. So I guess I'm saying, if you can't find something, don't just take the easy out. Be thorough and um, be truthful about it. The article led me to some, that they, those two women wrote, led me to some other research and it ended up being the beginning of the book, which was pretty, which is pretty interesting material because the other thing that I couldn't find was Ewan arriving. And part of that research was when did Ewan arrive in the United States? Well, it turns out in all likelihood, he and Evelyn were on the same ship, arrived at the same time, but he was posing as Evelyn's um, roommate, a female roommate. So anyway, it was very interesting. It was challenging. It was a process of years and a lot of people, but there was no wedding in quite wedding in Scotland. And um, it's, a, it's an advantage to be a later researcher because you can, you have time on your hand or time, time has passed and more things have been uncovered. So I don't blame Lucy for using that. That's, it was, it was very logical to her, but it was a challenge when I arrived at it because I couldn't find, a, I couldn't find any records of them having got married. A book about a photographer would be incomplete without examples of the artist's work. Can you describe the process of previewing and selecting Evelyn Cameron's photographs for inclusion in the book? That was one of the most enjoyable parts of writing the book. I loved, I never tired of reading the diaries, I have to say, after all those, those years. And I've missed her voice in my life since I've stopped um, working on the book but I really loved the photography, uh, choosing those photographs. I had photographs in mind because I wanted to illustrate the chapters. So there were choices among the photo, because she took so many photographs, among the um, similar subjects. So to choose one based on a composition I preferred or, you know, some, something about the angle or the lighting um, that was a bit artistic but I mostly knew the sort of photographs I wanted to include even though but I still explored and that was one of the last steps was going to the historical society at this point they printed a lot of Evelyn's photographs and they were in three ring binders in the research center. So I could just page through them and look at them. And I taught photography in Alaska at, at a community college and in the high school. Had some background in photography from journalism and illustrated my own articles with my photographs. So I had some sense of what, um, what was a good photo. Um, so that helped. Where can people access and buy your work? It's at the Historical Society, at the bookstores in Helena, 
uh, other stores in Helena, like Birds and Beasley's. It's in the bookstores of the main cities in Montana. Um, of course, it's in Eastern Montana, at the Ranger Review and at the uh, Visitor Center for Makoshika State Park. Oh, in Fort Benton. So whenever I go somewhere, I go in the bookstore and ask them if they'll carry my book. And they're happy to carry your book, especially when a writer stops by and um, you know takes the time to visit with them and show them the book, they'll buy a few copies. So whenever I stop in Montana, like Dylan's next on my list, they have a nice little bookstore down there. I try to get the book in the bookstore. Of course, you can order it through Amazon and Mount, and you can order it directly through Mountain Press too. Are you working on any new published works? Yes, I've been working on an essay for about a year um, on health in rural communities. And again, Eastern Montana is my example, really. Um, I have an idea for another biography and I started to work on that. I want to get permission from that woman's family but she's fascinating as well. And since our pandemic started, I felt the need to write, start a blog. But both my daughters are family medicine doctors and they're being confronted with the reality of this. You know, we're a bit protected in Montana from the harshness. Um, so in talking to them, I didn't want to wait on this and compose an essay later on. I might do that as well, but I wanted to um, inform people some things I'm learning about the um, coronavirus pandemic. And Evelyn, when I worked on the book, she lived through the 1918 pandemic, and I included it in the book. I found it fascinating to do some research on that. What yeah. is one tip or takeaway you would give a student who's doing research? to be accurate and thorough, to really care about accuracy. Even though it takes the time to get to the truth, there is a fact, there is a truth. So take your time with something. If you feel overwhelmed, maybe your subject's too broad and you can narrow your subject more so that you can really be thorough with it. You do have to limit your research. So you have to be disciplined in that way to limit yourself. And just really care about the subject. I wanted to um, honor them. You know, she was giving us these diaries. She didn't intend for them to be public, but they became public. And any subject you have, you just really want to be careful with how you represent that subject. Because writing does make a difference. We're almost at the end here. Was there anything you thought of that you'd like to add? Oh, just that it's really satisfying to finish a project like this. Sometimes I think, oh my goodness, how did I get that done? <laughs> you know, it's a lot of work <laughs> to finish a book. Um, and you don't, and you just take it in small pieces. And I looked at the chapters as essays, since I'd mostly been an essay writer before this. And so when I could think of them as small blocks, I, I used the book Bird by Bird in my teaching by Anne Lamott. And that's a great analogy. Okay, just get this chapter done. And then things, things flowed a lot better once I had that um, technique in place. Do you have a favorite place to study or work in Corette Library? I did a lot of my later book writing in the library. And it was a spot, okay, you're here, you're working for four or five hours, and since such helped. We're here in Helena, Montana, speaking with author Lorna Milne. Again, the title of her book is Evelyn Cameron, Photographer on the Western Prairie.